Chapter 23, Return to Darkness Anubis is lonely. Pluto is gone, gone forever. Hades and Hell have left to avenge Pluto's death. Thoth is little more than a yes man, but he has adapted quite readily to advising Anubis on matters of war. Thoth didn't have a great deal of choice in the matter. Eternal servitude trumps eternal punishment. There are still plenty of minor gods and goddesses roaming the rooms of the treachery bar, but all things considered, the ninth circle is dead. This thought amuses Anubis. He has no equals and no challengers, so there is really nothing to keep him busy. He spends his time speaking to his troops, the ones actually engaged in the battles. The frost giants, the demons, and the minor gods of war hang on his every sentence. He offers words of wisdom and strategy. They admire him. Anubis is the one fashioning the charge against the light. And under Anubis' guidance, they are winning. However, because he's not actively on the war front, much of the discussion is lost upon him. Although, he tries to keep up. A popular frost giant met her doom today. Her body has been brought to the underworld for reanimation. This was a particularly nasty death. A Welsh war god's spear pierced her heart. This is not an abnormal occurrence. These legions of the darkness, like their enemies from the light, die thousands of times on the battlefield. What makes this casualty so grisly, though, is the fact that the frost giant's heart was still impaled on the demigod's spear. It would take a week or longer until she would be capable of returning to war. Anubis spends more and more time with Inanna. Though she is far from an intellectual equal, her sexual prowess knows no bounds. There are worse ways to spend eternity. The Lord of the Underworld disappears with her to a secluded room. There, they pass time. Less than an hour passes, and there is a knock on the door. Who would possibly have the gall to disturb the great Anubis? He rises, naked and fuming. This had better be important. He flings the door open, and there stands Menhit, the Egyptian goddess of massacre. He is shocked to see her. His erection dies. Menhit notices this and laughs. She gestures to the bed and the voluptuous Inanna. Careful with that one. As the old saying goes, you are known by the company you keep. Inanna hisses, bringing a smirk to Menhit's sun-chapped lips. Anubis is speechless for a few moments. Menhit is an unlikely guest in the underworld. She stays in the desert with Set. There is no reason for her to be here. He puts on his brave face. Why, Menhit, how good to see you. The war with horse must be going well for you to pay me a visit. Let me gather my tunic, and we shall celebrate your arrival. Yes, Minhit says. Let's. Set's entourage could best be described as a militia. They command respect as soon as they enter the treachery. Most do not know Set. There had been rumors, of course, of the previous ruler of the underworld. But that was thousands of years ago, and they had pledged their allegiance to Anubis. They view Set as a curiosity, an ancient memory, the stuff ghost tales are made of. Still, they show respect. They clear a pathway for Set and his generals so that they may approach the bar. Set leans against the rail and is not immediately served. He quickly grows impatient. Susellus, the bartender, is occupied with a minor deity. She is pretty and laughing at his jokes. Set will not be getting service anytime soon, unless he demands it. Set slams his fist on the bar and shouts, Get over here, now! My troops are thirsty! Susellus looks briefly at Set and ignores him. No one speaks to him like this, not even Anubis. Susellus goes right back to chatting with the demigod. One of Set's generals grins. He has no idea what he's in for, does he? Set glares daggers at Susellus. Finally, Susellus concedes and walks over. Can I get you something? Set growls. You have no idea who I am, do you? Susellus shakes his head. Should I? Set smiles. My friend, I can assure you it is best that you don't. Now bring a round of your finest Egyptian beers for me and my compatriots. Menhit and Anubis approach Set. Anubis is shocked to see Set. Menhit is giddy. I'm sure you two have much to discuss. Don't mind me. 
I'll just be around the corner. Anubis is nervous. A bar stool becomes empty next to Set, but still, he elects to stand. It is good to see you. Anubis lies. Tell me stories of the war with Horus. Set reaches down by his side and passes Horus's falcon mask to Anubis. This should answer any questions you may have. Anubis studies the mask. It is clear that Horus has been defeated. Anubis motions for Thoth to join them. The meek Thoth is equally surprised to see Set. He looks at the falcon mask. Horus would never allow it to be taken. Congratulations on your victory. Set raises his glass. It was hard fought. Horus was a magnificent opponent. The clash lasted thousands of years. And still, you are the vanquisher, Anubis exclaims. That I am. I cannot help but wonder, however, if this conflict could have been completed sooner. Anubis shrugs. I am not sure what you mean. Set stares him down. You are an opportunistic god, Anubis. You knew that the longer I was away, the firmer grasp you would gain on the underworld. You could have sent forces to fight Horus at any time, and yet you chose not to. There's the war to consider. The Sphere Eternus is at stake. If the darkness could gain control over it, then we would control all realms. That is where I concentrated my forces. Set shakes his head. When you say the darkness, you speak only of yourself. You fancy yourself their leader. I cannot tell you how little I care about the darkness or the light. What impresses me is leadership and strength. My enemy Horus showed more fortitude than you could ever muster. Set, while it is good to see you and revel in your success, I urge you to tread lightly. You are now in my realm. You actually believe that, don't you? I expect you've always rued the day that I would return to reclaim my place. Today is that day. Anubis chuckles. Look around you, Set. That small cadre you brought with you is vastly outnumbered. They must also be war-weary after thousands of years of battle. The gods in my realm are committed to me wholeheartedly. They will not hesitate to engage your small force. Set smiles at this. Anubis, I have an entire army outside waiting for my word to storm the underworld. The sole reason they have not is I'd prefer not to destroy the interior of this habitation. It is to be mine after all. Set looks around the treachery bar. I do like what you've done with the place. It would be a shame to destroy it. Anubis becomes incensed. This will stay under my control. Your army shall recognize me as a true leader. They shall join with me. You will be trapped in the ice for all eternity. Set Summer's men hit and tells her to open the floodgates. She barks the order. Invade! The doors fly open, and dozens of set soldiers enter. Try not to kill them all. The frost giants pick up their battle axes. They swing wildly at the attacking Egyptians. However, the Egyptian demigods are unsure what to do. Some engage the fracas, but many do not. They are confused. Set has returned. What does this mean to them? Should their allegiance change? The frost giants are no match for Set's forces. They are quickly overwhelmed. The Egyptian demons, who had been sitting on the sidelines, now actively engage on behalf of Set's army. Soon, it is just Anubis standing there. Set is smiling. So, you were discussing an eternity trapped in the ice? Is that what you want for yourself? Or are you ready to admit defeat? Anubis looks to Thoth. Thoth whispers in his ear. Anubis, it seems, has no choice. Still, he attempts a negotiation. The darkness has gained much ground under my leadership. Soon we shall control the portal. My suggestion is that I continue to lead the battle. Set considers this. Gaining control of the portal would be most advantageous. 
Can you guarantee this? Anubis answers without thinking. I can. I have trained this arm of the darkness well. They will accomplish the task. Good. You shall be on the battlefield with them as will I. Together we shall conquer. But it is I that am the ruler of the underworld. Do you understand? I do. I shall follow your commands to the letter. Set smiles. I am pleased that you see things as crystalline as I. We wouldn't want you to end up like those who do not. Anubis is momentarily confused. What do you mean? But then he sees Ra's sarcophagus lowered into the icy pit of flame. From that moment, Anubis knows who's in control.